and join the live. But, um, yeah, so anywho, um, she claimed everything seemed cool at first, but the strange thing was that she claimed Ashanti's father always came, you know, to the dance lessons and would sit around and he would be playing with all the kids, you know, throwing them across his lap, you know, just playing with them, tickling them, you know how you play with little kids, but... She said it went from, that's how it first started off. She was just, you know, he would come and he would be playing to the kids. And she noticed that he would start paying a lot of attention to her um, compared to a lot of the other kids. But she was eight years old, she claims. So she was like, I, I really don't, didn't know, you know, what was going on. I just know this man liked to play a lot. And that, again, that's where it all started. Um... Okay, let me send her this link real quick. She's like, oh. Okay, paste, send. Okay, boom. All right, I'm just sending the link. Some people is asking for the link to the live. Okay, so. Okay, I think I think Keontae is in the live now. All right. <laughs> Just Trish, you lost. <laughs> I'm going to break it down to y'all. I'm going to break it down to y'all. I'm sorry. I got distracted for a minute because somebody was hitting me up in my inbox talking about how they get to the live. So I have to send them the link. <laughs> please, y'all, share the live. If you have a community uh, tab, please share the live. Share it on your Facebook. I know I was supposed to go live at 10, and we late. We late because of technical difficulties. But so please share the live on your Facebook, Twitter, IG, you know, wherever. Thank you. I appreciate that. So... I'm just reading you Stephanie's allegations. It's not word by it's not it's not a uh, word for word, but I just jotted down some of the things that she said. Okay, she claims that when she was about eight years old, that's when she started the dance group. But when she was around nine years old, she claims that's when he allegedly started feeling, you know, feeling on her and stuff. Um like touching her and he would say little things like i'm sorry i didn't i asked, didn't mean to ask you know touch you right there on your chest or wherever i'm sorry i didn't mean to touch you between your legs you know it was an accident you know if he would do things like that at first and then it got more of he just started doing it without apologizing uh she claims that the first time he touched her was if you're from New York or from that area, um, near like Glen Cove, am I saying that right? Glen, Glen Cove. Um, it was an old, she said it was a road called Old Tapping Road behind a Glen Cove Middle School, which I actually think is a high school nowadays. But anywho, um, she said, you know, the first time he had told her, you know, to pull her pants down and she was like, what? Uh-uh. Now, now, let me backtrack before I even get into that, y'all. Because when she took, when she claims that Ashanti's mother, Tina, took her under her wings, right? Made her her protege. So a lot of times, uh, Tina, she claims, had her. Like, she would pick her up from her mom. She would take her with him. She would take her shopping. They would have her at her house. I mean, she was like, literally, she had kind of became part of the family, and she claims that Tina and her husband, Ashanti's father, had told her mom that, you know, they would take care of her. Um, they would protect her. They would help her out, you know, any way they could. And, and she claims they bought her clothes. They, you know, fed her. They would get her hair. You know, just all kind of stuff that you would do for a child. You know, just normal stuff that her mother probably... They had a big family. They had a big family. So I'm sure her mom trusted them. And I'm sure she was like, okay, you know, this is one child that I know I can get help from, from these decent people. Mind you, this is way before Shanti came along, before she was even born. So it wasn't like they was like, oh, okay, Ashanti, you know, we know her, she's famous. Her parents, you know, took to my child who's a dancer, you know, it was nothing like that. Ashanti was nowhere. She was 
probably a thought in the heavens at that time. So anyway, she said that's where it first started. He pulled up, you know, behind a middle school and started fondling her and messing with her. Then she says another year later, when she had turned 10 years old and she started to get her menstrual, um, he had tried to do more with her. And she again told him, no, we can't do this. We can't do this. Because she, she claims that around that time, back in the 70s, and I'm a 70s baby, so I can admit, I can't ever remember my mother back in the day telling me, if somebody touch you, say this. If somebody do this, say this. If somebody, you better go tell. You better call 911. You better tell your teacher. I, I don't ever remember having that conversation <laughs> when I was a young child. But, I mean, some of y'all, my parents might have had that conversation with y'all. But, um, again, like I said in my earlier live, one thing I do am familiar with is back then also a lot of parents, a lot of grandparents, a lot of even kids, like victims, that things would get swept under the rug. Sometimes when you did tell, it was probably usually somebody close to the fam or your relative or, you know, uncle, cousin, brothers or something like that. And back then it wasn't a lot of, oh, we're going to call the cops and turn your uncle in or call your cops and turn your cousin in. It was a lot of families back then sweeping stuff under the rug, which I know all so well because I have a lot of friends and family members who can testify to that happening. Um, but that's a nut story for another day. Maybe on the Hood Table channel. Maybe on the Hood Table channel, which y'all better make sure y'all subscribe to. The Hood Table. D-A-H-O-O-D Table. Three words. <laughs> the Hood Table. And we are going to be over there probably Friday night or either Sunday night, but I'll post the notification. But anyway, um, back to what I was saying about these allegations. Uh, Stephanie claimed that around the time when he started, you know, just fondling her before it got really deep, she would say, you know, I don't want to do this. She didn't know quite how to handle it because she was only, you know, nine when it first started. She said, you know, the touching and he would tell her, he would threaten her, don't tell nobody, especially don't tell Tina, you know, Ashanti's mother, don't tell Tina, because if she do, she might not believe you, and she might, you know, put you off the dance team, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, you said you know it too well? It's Trish? Oh, good. Somebody, I got an amen in the church. I got an amen in the church. <laughs> but, um, so, um, it happened anyway. It happened anyway. And once she turned 10, she had started having her menstrual. And that, that's kind of young for, you know, some females. But it usually happens between the age of 10 and 12-ish, you know, your menstrual. So she started having her menstrual. Again, around that age, she claimed that he also started hanging with her sister, who was older, like in her 20s. And... He started, like, you know, wooing her sister and stuff um, to kind of get away into the house. Now, at this time, she claims this is before Ashanti's parents were married. So, they were just dating it. They were just dating it. So, allegedly, at this time, he was messing with her, Stephanie, uh, from the age of 9 to 10, because we're still only at 9 to 10 right now. Also, he was kicking it with her sister, who was in her 20s. And she alleges that he had a lot of other girlfriends. A lot of other girlfriends. So, at the time when she was around 10 years old, he started, you know, talking to her sister. But she said when he first started came in, coming over to their house um, to talk to her sister, she didn't know. She was still young then, so she didn't know what kind of relationship, what kind of friendship they had, if it was friendship, if it was platonic, if it was sexual. You know, she didn't know at that time, but she soon learned that it was. Um, she claimed that he started doing stuff for her mom, like, you know, helping her out with things. Uh, she said her dad was a, a heavy drinker, um, so he would always, like, bring liquor and stuff over for her dad. Basically, she was saying that he started really being nice, really nice to her family and using certain reasons to come by the house because he was actually, you know, messing with her too at a young age. 
Now, <laughs> I'm like, wow. She claims that he was messing with her and she wasn't even 12 yet. <sighs> Not even a tween yet. And messing with her sister and messing with other ladies. So, what happened next was Tina and uh, Ashanti's father. She said they lived in Queens at that time with Tina's mother. So, they lived with Ashanti's grandmother. This was before Ashanti was born. Um, she said they lived in a two-bedroom apartment in Queens. And a lot of people was always asking, like, dude, why is this little girl always with you, man? Like, his cousins would ask. His mother would ask. Um, his friends would ask. Just people in general would ask, why is this child always with you? You know, this little girl. And he would tell everybody the same story. And he also made her memorize the same story and basically that story was you know her mother is having hard times she you know needs help with the kid and me and my girl tina shanti's mother um we told the mother you know because we met her at dance you know that met her at dance basically they was helping this mother take care of their child you know kind of like a kind of like a godparent type of thing you know when when you when when a parent might need a little extra help financially, you know, with clothes or whatnot, you know, sometimes that's where the godparent will pick up, and so that's what she, he would tell everybody, and people would be looking at him and speculating, like, uh huh, okay, and she even claims that once his mother, who they were living with when they were young before they got married, claimed she claims that his mother even kept asking him. Why are you with this child? If if you and Tina is both supposed to be helping this mother, you know, take care of the child or whatnot, um, why is she never with Tina? And his mother, <laughs> Stephanie said his mother told him, you need to stay away from that little girl. And, and you know what that meant. You know what that meant. If a mother or grandmother tells you, you need to stay away from that little girl. It was probably a possibility that the mother knew that something bad could come about from that situation. A grown man hanging with a child who's like 19 years old all the time, all the time. She claimed that everywhere he went, she went. When she wasn't in school, he would take her with him to work. Um, she said he used to... Uh, he used to be like, you know, one of those people who install uh, car stereos. Uh, he would have her sitting at his job all day, like on the weekends or in the summer. And she would be out there playing with little kids and playing with dolls. And, you know, just run around, jump rope, you know, stuff that normal kids supposed to do. And while he's in there working all day, she claims he kept her on a really, really tight leash. Because of the fact that he always wanted to know where she was, what she's doing, and who she's talking to. And making sure she wasn't, you know, saying things that he didn't want her to say about their relationship. So, this is what she claims, that he kept a tight leash on her. Um, he would take her to school, pick her up from school. I mean, all this, all this. This little girl, 19 years old. The child that Tina took under her wings, allegedly became the child that he took under his wings, if you know what I mean. Thank you for tuning in to this little portion of the live video that I did last night on the allegations from a lady named Stephanie Taylor, who's alleging that the singer Ashanti's father, Thomas Kincaid Douglas, allegedly sexually molested her, raped her, and impregnated her three times before she even turned 15 and made her have three abortions before she turned 15. For more of this review, please go to my YouTube channel, Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews, to listen to the rest or the entire video that I did last night. 
Again, Tanya's Prime Time TV slash media reviews. Thank you.